Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. For all the hundreds of adjectives that we can use to describe shipwrecks, such as disastrous or calamitous or tragic, it's not very often that we get to throw around the word disgusting. But that certainly applies to the paddle steamer Princess Alice, which was a ship with a pretty name, but a very ugly fate. It was Tuesday, September 3rd, 1878, and the paddle steamer Princess Alice was chugging her way up the Thames. The ship was a small excursion vessel, about 220 feet long and 432 gross registered tons. She was Scottish built, originally launched in 1865 and named Butte, but had been bought early on for operations on the River Thames. She was renamed Princess Alice after Queen Victoria's daughter, and by 1878 was a familiar sight at ports along the river from London. She was licensed to carry 930 odd passengers, and would operate regular sailings from near London Bridge down the Thames to Sheerness, Kent, and back with three stops along the way. September 3rd was a bright sunny day, so it was busier than normal when Princess Alice departed Swan Pier in the morning for her outbound trip, skippered by Captain William Grinstead. The day passed without incident, with many passengers getting on and off at every call. Because Princess Alice's operators, the London Steamboat Company, owned a number of ships, it was usual for day trippers to disembark one vessel, spend some time sightseeing, and then use their same ticket to hop aboard the next ship outbound, or to return as they saw fit. Not unlike a water-based bus. After a day of plugging her way downstream, Princess Alice landed at Sheerness, the end of the line, and prepared for the return voyage. However, a few miles upstream, something was happening that would have dire consequences for hundreds of people in the very near future. Nineteenth-century London was a grimy, bleak place, as anybody familiar with the works of Charles Dickens could agree. It was the height of the Industrial Revolution, and the city was famous for its pea supers when the air became thick with soot and smog which often killed hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. Every day, vast factory chimneys poured thick black coal smoke into the air, and charnel houses and slaughterhouses butchered animals on an unprecedented scale, and all these byproducts of this industrial activity was washed directly into the gutters and sewers of London. The London sewer system until the 19th century had been a fairly basic affair, and sanitation was a real issue. But technological change had come in the shape of enormous pumping houses, armed with triple expansion steam engines, similar to the ones you'd find on ships, which on a daily basis would discharge millions of millions of gallons of foul black sewage into the Thames River. As Princess Alice was preparing to leave Sheerness, this is exactly what happened. Approximately 75 million imperial gallons of this toxic soup was pumped out to float downstream and into the sea and Princess Alice would be sailing straight through it. The steamer left for home at about 6.30 that night as the sun was beginning to set. This voyage had in fact been billed as a moonlight trip, so passengers could sail out for sightseeing all day and then rely on safe passage home after dusk. Her decks were crowded with passengers, but because of the loose nature of the company's schedule, no lists were kept of those who had embarked. At about 7.30, Princess Alice was on the home stretch and her paddles were now churning through the black sewage as she passed Crossness pumping station. Then, when she was just off Woolwich, a ship was spotted ahead. What happened next sealed the fate of hundreds of people. Instead of keeping to her course, Princess Alice's helmsman sought the slack water where it would be most calm on the south side of the river, but in doing so, brought the steamer directly into the path of the mystery ship ahead. Out of the darkness loomed a pair of navigation lights, then a jack staff, two anchors, and finally an entire ship's bow, cutting through the water at about five knots. In a panic, Captain Grinstead shouted up at the mystery ship, Where are you coming to? Good God, where are you coming to? But it was too late for any evasive action. The huge mystery ship slammed straight into Princess Alice on her starboard side just forward of the paddle box, and the smaller ship, her decks lined with passengers, broke in half. Princess Alice had been modified so that she had five watertight compartments, but these were immediately rendered useless after the collision, and hundreds of her occupants were hurled into the brackish water as the ship sank. Although it wasn't exactly water, 
Instead, Princess Alice's passengers found themselves neck deep in a thick soup of human waste, dead animals, toxic and industrial waste, and soiled water flush from slaughterhouses, factories and mills. A chemist later described this as two continuous columns of decomposed fermenting sewage hissing like soda water with baneful gases, so black that the water is stained for miles and discharging a corrupt charnel house odour that will be remembered by all as being particularly depressing and sickening. This was an era where very few could swim, and even if they could, the restrictive, heavy woolen clothes that both men and women wore would become waterlogged and weigh their wearer down. Sure enough, as hundreds of people slid into the Thames as their ship sank, they too sank with her, or struggled for air at the surface before succumbing and being dragged under into the toxic filth. It was over in minutes, as the crew of the mystery ship a collier named Bywall Castle looked on in terror, hundreds of people were drowning in front of them. They rushed to throw ropes and anything that would float down into the water including life buoys, ladders and planks. A contemporary tract published just after the tragedy described it. The scene which followed defies description, for death has seldom assumed a more appalling shape. The river resounded with wild shrieks of human agony, and fathers, mothers, lovers and little children were speedily engulfed in the waters of death. Survivors have said, and they may readily be believed, that were they to live a hundred years, they would never forget the maddening excitement which followed the vessel being struck nearly in halves, and when hundreds were seen struggling for rescue and grasping at anything, however frail, that seemed to promise some faint chance of escape. For at least a hundred yards, the river was full of drowning passengers screaming madly for help, and then came the silence, which was more awful even than the wildest shrieking, for it told that all was over. Just ten minutes behind Princess Alice was her sister, Duke of Tech, which arrived to help, but it was already all over. Only 130 people were hauled to safety, and some 600 to 700 had died and now floated lifelessly down the Thames. Recovering the dead became top priority, and local watermen were offered five shillings for each recovered corpse, which often resulted in fights over bodies. The scene was hellish. The black sewage water covered the victims in a thick, oily ooze that was nearly impossible to remove and made identification extremely difficult. Over the next few days, the high bacterial content of the water had horrific consequences as the Princess Alice's former passengers began to bloat and decompose at a much faster rate. Bodies began washing up miles away downstream, so distraught families had to travel back and forth searching for lost loved ones. Only two people who had been below deck survived and divers on the wreck later found passageways and stairwells crammed with dead who had tried to rush up and out of the doomed ship as she sank. The water was so filthy and disgusting that 16 people died within two weeks after the disaster, having ingested some of it, and dozens were seriously ill. In all, some 640 bodies were eventually recovered, but it is thought that many, many more were lost. Plans were made to recover the ship, and just four days after the disaster on the 7th, her bow section was raised and beached. Ironically though, as that section was being towed ashore, Bywell Castle happened to be steaming past. The stern was also recovered, and photographs show both sections beached on the banks of the Thames. Hundreds of sightseers came out to watch, and extra police had to be called in to keep them at bay. A subsequent lawsuit, after Princess Alice's operators had tried to sue those of Bywall Castle, found that both ships were at fault, but the Board of Trade had very different ideas. They found that Princess Alice's crew had not followed the rules of right of way, and later on a coroner's inquest also found that Princess Alice was overloaded with people and that there wasn't enough life-saving equipment on board for all. Because of the disaster, there were also some changes implemented. Instead of dumping toxic waste directly into the Thames, a fleet of sludge boats were commissioned to transport untreated waste for dumping into the North Sea, and this continued until 1998. Also, the Marine Police Force found that their rowboats had been insufficient, and then replaced them with steam-powered launchers. The London Steamboat Company bought back the wrecks to halves, recovered the engines, and then sent the rest for scrap. However, the company went bankrupt after only six years. As for the Bywell Castle, well, in January 1883, she was sailing on the Bay of Biscay when she was caught in a monster storm and disappeared with all hands.
So there you have it. Not exactly a happy ending for the crew of the SS Bywell Castle. And to this day, the sinking of the Princess Alice remains the single largest loss of life on a British waterway. If you've enjoyed this video and the rest of my content, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button. I hate to sound like every bottom feeding YouTuber out there, but it actually does me a lot of good because it means other people get to see my videos and then engage with the content and enjoy them. For those of you who have subscribed, I really appreciate it. I really enjoy making these videos, even ones as kind of disgusting and, and unhappy as this one was. But thanks anyway for watching. As always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.